I would like to thank, first of all, Alessandro Marcello for inviting me here to show you uh, the work we do in our lab, that is the discovery of antiviruses um, uh, driven by the structure of the proteins. Just a, a schematic view of the drug discovery process, which involves several steps and uh, which takes uh, an average of uh, 10, 15 years when we are lucky, uh, from the drug discovery to the uh, approval of the drug. So first of all, we have to identify the disease that we want to study. And then we have to identify the target that is involved in the disease. Usually the target is a protein. So we have to demonstrate the relevance of the target protein in the disease we chosen. Then we can start the identification of lead molecules that uh, are mainly identified using random or rational screening in, uh, approaches, in particular uh, using high throughput screening, uh, which tests large numbers of compounds to see uh, if they are able to affect the activity of the target protein or structure-based drug design, which uses the three-dimensional structure of compounds uh, from a, a library of uh, small molecules that are docked into the binding site of the target protein chosen. Then, once we have the lead molecules, we can uh, um, modify the molecules in order to obtain suitable pro uh, um, compounds with suitable pro properties to become drugs. So we have to l have a look at uh, pharmacodynamic, physiodynamical and pharmacokinetic properties and uh, also toxicological aspects. The hints to how modify the lead compound can originate, for example, for, from uh, molecular modeling and structural biology informations. Then, once we have the lead molecule, we can start the preclinical trials that involve in vitro studies and trials on animal to uh, obtain preliminary efficacy and pharmacokinetic information of the compound selected. So we can start then the clinical trials in humans, uh, which are classified into uh, five phases. And once we have a drug, uh, we have to um, combine all the results into a document, which is submitted to the Food and Drug Administration for review and then approval for the circulation of the drug in the market. What we do in our lab is mainly the identification of lead molecules, some attempt to optimize the lead molecules, and in collaboration with other group, we have also some preclinical uh, trials data. So the first step is the identification of the disease. Uh, in our lab, we decided to work on single-strand positive sense RNA viruses, which belongs to the class four of Baltimore classification. This is the largest group of RNA viruses, which comprises more than 30 families. And uh, their genome is uh, directly used by the ribosome to be translated into a single polyprotein, which is modified to give several uh, proteins necessary for the replication of the virus. Examples of this class of uh, families include the important uh, families such as astroviride, which causes uh, um, uh, gastroenteritis in uh, children and adults. Picornaviride, that are famous for, uh, because they uh, cause from the co uh, common cold to uh, poliomyelitis. Or coronaviride, that is uh, famous in the last years because of the SARS virus. And flaviviride, that is famous for the hepatitis C virus. Uh, um, and the caliciviride, that is famous for the uh, norovirus, gastroenteritis virus. We focus mainly on flaviviride, in particular on the virus flavivirus, and in caliciviride, uh, in particular on the genus norovirus. Then we have to identify the target uh, involved in the viral replication process. 
here a very simple view um, of the viral replication uh, complex. So we have the virus that attaches to a cell, then the virus penetrates into uh, the membrane and inject um, its nucleic acid into the cell. Then uh, the nucleic acid is replicates um, in several copies, which are packaged into various particles uh, and released from the cell. What we want to target in this process are some of the proteins involved in the replication of the viral nucleic acid. During the viral replication in the single-strand RNA viruses, the viral genome is transcribed into a single uh, negative strand RNA, which is used as template uh, to synthesize the daughter RNA. So, in order to have several copies of the viral genome, we need two enzymes, in particular the helicase that is able to unwind the double strand RNA and the RNA dependent RNA polymerase that is able to copy the RNA. These two, target, uh, two targets are already validated as important targets for the viral replication. So uh, here my uh, talk is divided into parts, the first one on flavivirus and the second one on norovirus. We identify the target helicase for the flavivirus and a polymerase for the norovirus. Then we perform an in silico docking search to identify lead molecules that in the case of flavivirus is ivermectin and for norovirus is suramine and F23. Then, in the case of ivermectin, because it's already a drug used in human, we are not thinking to optimize this molecule. In contrast, uh, for suramine and, and F23, we are trying to uh, modify and optimize these molecules. We also have some uh, preclinical trials on cell-based assays, and we are starting now uh, the in vivo studies on uh, the AG129 mouse model for dengue virus. So starting from flaviviruses, some general information. Um, they are enveloped viruses whose associated diseases are important human diseases, such as yellow fever, that causes more than 200,000 anal cases per year. And also, if a vaccine already exists, there are still 50% of deaths. Then uh, the dengue that is the most diffuse flavivirus with 50 million annual cases and 25,000 deaths per year. There are no vaccines and no uh, antivirus against this virus. There are also re-emerging viruses such as Japanese encephalitis, that, which causes 50,000 annual cases per year with uh, an average of deaths from 0.3 to 60% per year and the tick-borne encephalitis, which causes 12,000 human cases per year, and is lethal only 1% of cases, but unfortunately it leaves 10-20% of survivors with permanent neurological damage. And the West Nile virus that causes thousands of deaths and disabled patients. The infection vectors are mosquito or ticks, that's why this uh, infection spread very rapidly. The genome spans about 11 kilobases and is translated to a single pluriprotein, which is cleaved by cellular and viral proteases in three structural proteins, the capsid, the membrane, and the envelope, and seven non-structural proteins, which form together the replication complex. We want to inhibit in this replication complex the non-structural protein 3. The non-structural protein 3 shows a N-terminal protease activity and a C-terminal helicase activity. In our lab, we performed a thousand of crystallization trials using a robot, which uh, allow us to mix from nano to microliters of protein to, uh, with a reservoir solution. The reservoir solution is composed by uh, precipital agents, um, such as salts or organic uh, solvents or um, 
um, something else that is uh, able uh, to um, help the protein to give crystals. So we analyzed the, the drops we obtain using a microscope and if we are lucky, we see uh, something better than this. But in this case, we obtain this thin crystal that anyway allowed us uh, to solve the structure of the West Nile helicase uh, domain. This structure is composed by these three domains, uh, blue, red and green. The first two domains are very similar in their fold, and are, uh, they show a Rossmann fold, so this means that they have this beta sheet here surrounded by four and three alpha helices. The third domain uh, is mainly composed by alpha helices. These two domains are the nucleotide binding domains, so they bind the ATP that is the energy necessary to the case to unwind the RNA. We modeled then the binding of the case domain to a nucleotide, uh, to a dub strand RNA, using the superposition of our structure with a DNA bound bacterial case. In this model, the putative single strand RNA access site would be located between these two alpha helices, the alpha helix 2 in domain 2 and the alpha helix 9 in domain 3. This, this model was confirmed one year later by Julien Lescar, who solved the structure of the dengue virus in presence of a single strand RNA and uh, uh, of analog of ATP. Here you see that the single strand RNA enter from between these two alpha helix, here is the, uh, the alpha helix 2, and here is the alpha helix 9. We superposed the structure of West Nile virus helicase with uh, other known uh, flavivirus helicase structure, yellow fever and dengue virus. And we noticed that the distance between these two alpha helices varies between 7.2 and 11.5 angstrom. We started to think that uh, this distance, so this uh, difference, could be important for the uh, unwinding activity of the helicase. So in our normal mode analysis, we saw that the protein is able to have this uh, scissor-like movement that is important to the helicase for um, um, progress to, uh, into the RNA, single-strand RNA, and uh, uh, unwind the double-strand RNA. This more normal mode analysis was also confirmed by molecular dynamic simulation done on the apoprotein without the ATP and uh, on the uh, protein in presence of ATP. From these blue spots, you see that uh, the apoprotein um, shows the possibility to stay in an open, intermediate and closed states in the 40 nanoseconds of simulation. In contrast, uh, the ATP helicase, uh, sorry, the, uh, the helicase bound to the ATP, is able to stay only in the closed form. So we started to think that the ATP binding shifts an open-close equilibrium toward a closed state, blocking the progression along the single-strand RNA. Then the ATP is hydrolyzed to ADP. The ADP shows lower affinity for the protein and is then released from the protein. Then an open-closed equilibrium is established and the Brownian, Brownian motion causes protein progression onto the single-strand RNA and the RNA unwinding. So starting from this model, we decided to inhibit the unwinding activity of the helicase, um, do, um, performing an in silico docking. But instead of following the helicase in classical inhibition approach that uh, looks for inhibitors uh, uh, that are nucleotide um, homologous, we decided to inhibit this new uh, single-strand RNA access site. 
So we selected this part of the molecule and we performed an in silico docking search using a library of thousands of small molecules and the program AutoDoc that is able to uh, insert each molecule inside the part we selected and, to, um, and is able to see which of these molecules uh, could be uh, potential inhibitors of the case. We obtain a, a list of molecules with low energies that, so that we're uh, able to bind this part of the protein between which uh, we selected paramomycin sulfate, owabine, and ivermectin, which showed inhibition activity in our radioactive assay. In this radioactive assay, we used a single-strand RNA bound to a radioactive phosphorus, which was annealed to a, a single-strand, uh, to the complementary RNA, to give a double-strand RNA which show a molecular weight higher than the single-strand RNA in a polyacrylamide cell. The protein is able to unwind the double-strand RNA, but this uh, uh, capability was completely abolished by the presence of paramomycin sulfate. Also, owabine and ivermectin show very good IC50, but paramomycin sulfate binds to the RNA. So what we see here is not an inhibition due to the binding of paramomycin sulfate in this part of the molecule, of the protein, but it's due to the substraction of the RNA to the assay. Uh, and owabine instead was toxic to cells. So we um, focused only on ivermectin. We uh, set up in our lab a fluorescent helicase inhibition assay uh, in order to measure the IC50 value of ivermectin using the helicase of different uh, flaviviruses. In this case, I reported yellow fever, dengue virus, and West Nile virus. As you can see, uh, the IC50 value obtained are um, in the nanomolar range from 100 to 500 nanomolar. We wanted also to understand the mechanism of action of ivermectin um, in uh, this uh, unwinding activity. So we performed kinetic helicase assays. And in uh, this linear wear bark uh, plot, uh, we saw an uncompetitive mechanism. This means that ivermectin is able to bind the helicase domain only when RNA is bound. We, of course, of course performed cell inhibition assays in collaboration with Johann Knights in Leuven. Uh, using uh, the yellow fever virus. So here are the con is the control of the cells non-infected, and here is the control of the cells infected with yellow fever. As you can see, increasing the amount of ivermectin, the cells are protected by the virus. We also measure the effects of the ivermectin on the viability of infected host cells and on virus yield determined by uh, the quantitative RT-PCR. And as you can see, the uh, ivermectin is able to inhibit the virus um, at, uh, with an EC50 in the order of low nanomolar range. In particular, for the yellow fever, we see a, a EC50 of 0.5 nanomolar. We performed these experiments also for dengue virus and West Nile virus, and as you can see, the uh, um, EC50 value we obtained are not so bad, but not so good as that one of yellow fever, um, especially in the case of West Nile virus. In this table, we can observe, uh, observe two gaps. The first one is um, that one between the EC50 value obtained cell-based assay and the IC50 value obtained using the helicase inhibition assay. So it seems that the inhibitor works better in cell-based assay than in our helicase domain. Usually these two values are the contrast. This one is higher than this one. The second gap is that one we observed for the EC50 value obtained in the, with using the other two flaviviruses. 
Why these gaps? How we explain this gap? The first one uh, between uh, the in vitro experiments uh, and the uh, cell-based assay experiments could be due to the fact that there are yet undiscovered processes other than uh, helicase that may contribute to the mechanism of inhibition of ivermectin. We try to uh, select um, drug-resistant virus, va virus variants um, in order to understand which could be the target uh, that could be uh, involved in the mechanism of inhibition of ivermectin. But after six months, we were not able to select uh, the virus variants. Uh, there is a recent article published by Wagstaff et al. That, uh, mm, where they show the uh, inhibition of ivermectin. So they say that ivermectin is able to inhibit the alpha-beta importin and then the, um, able to inhibit the um, replication of flaviviruses and also the HIV virus. So this one could be one of the mechanisms implied in the um, inhibition process. The second gap, that one between um, the, of the EC50 value between the three uh, viruses could be due to the um, a less susceptibility of viral replication complex uh, of these two virus, dengue virus and especially uh, West Nile virus, with respect to the isolated helicase domain. We can exclude that the mechanism of inhibition involves the early stage of the viral replication cycle. In fact, in our time of compound addition experiments, we see that ivermectin and the reference compound um, ribavirin lose their protective activity when added at a time point that coincides with the onset of a viral replication in the uh, control culture. We also performed an experiment uh, using the um, replicon of dengue virus that uh, harbored the non-structural proteins or the seven non-structural proteins and uh, we saw that the uh, ivermectin is able to inhibit these uh, non-structural proteins in a concentration ranging between 1 and 2.5 uh, micromolar. We exclude, so in, we can now say that one of the structural proteins are involved in the mechanism of inhibition of ermectin. But we excluded that uh, the non structural protein phi, that is the polymerase uh, domain, is involved in the inhibition of ivermectin because we performed uh, polymerase inhibition assays. Uh, here we measure the activity of the polymerase, uh, measuring the uh, increasing of uh, the fluorescence due to the um, formation of the double-strand RNA. So in both cases, using the dengue virus polymerase with and without ivermectin, we, we observe the same activity. We try then to um, understand which were the amino acids involved in the uh, binding uh, um, of ivermectin, the amino acid of the helicase domain involved in the binding of ivermectin. Uh, in the absence of the crystal structure, we analyzed the model obtained uh, using our in silico uh, search. In this model, ivermectin seems to be uh, to interact mainly with these uh, two amino acids, the aspartic. 409 and um, threonin 4110. So we decided to mutate uh, these two amino acids. We um, <coughs> made semi-conservative mutation in uh, the early case of the three viruses and uh, the activity, the early case activity man was maintained in all the three early cases but the inhibition of ivermectin was completely abolished up to five micromolar of ivermectin. Ivermectin is specific against flaviviruses. We performed an helicase assay using the helicase domain of hepatitis C virus, that is the closest um, helicase to flaviviruses, and we didn't observe activity up to 10 micromolar of ivermectin. No antiviral 
activity was um, also observed against other flaviv flaviviridae viruses, such as HCV or uh, BBDV, or against other virus families that could be single-strand RNA to double-strand DNA viruses. We still observe in the same experiment an uh, inhibition activity of other two flaviviruses, the Japanese encephalitis and the tick-borne encephalitis with good EC50 value. So, Evermectin is known already as an anti-elminting agent for administration in humans. So, we are not thinking for the moment to optimize these molecules, also because we think that assessing the potential of this molecule um, could be uh, may require a minimum effort. For example, the uh, meaning of uh, epidemiological records in uh, that region where uh, flavivirus are endemic and where this uh, drug was administered for decades, uh, ag for decades uh, against the parasitic disease uh, may already offer the first insights into the uh, protective role of this uh, old drug. Uh, we are now starting in vivo, um, in vivo experiment in collaboration with Sabash Vasudevan in Singapore using this mouse model AG129 that seems to be the best model for dengue virus for the moment. We applied a patent for the new use of ivermectin in the treatment of flaviviruses. And if, if you are interested, the um, paper is already published. As I said, the second part of my talk is about noroviruses. Noroviruses are non-enveloped viruses whose associated disease are the 19% of uh, epidemic non-bacterial outbreaks of gastroenteritis. The infection occurs in closed communities such as hospitals, uh, cruise ships, uh, dormitories, uh, and the uh, infection uh, is very, uh, spreads very rapidly by person to person and through contaminated food. The genome uh, spans about 7.6 kilobases and is translated to a polyprotein which is cleaved by the virus encode 3 c like pro uh, cysteine proteases to yield the metro non structural proteins. Between these non structural proteins, we decide to uh, inhibit the uh, polymerase domain. There is uh, already um, the structure published since 2008 of the human norovirus in complex with RNA. As you can see, the structure of this uh, uh, polymerase is the classical structure of a polymerase with thumb, palm, and finger domain. In this uh, structure, we um, selected the part where, uh, of the um, protein where the, a new nucleotide is going to be uh, bind to the new synthesized RNA, so what is the uh, active site. Uh, we perform then an in silico docking and we obtain a list of compounds between which, uh, in our polymerase assay, uh, suramine and uh, NF23 show a very good IC50 value, ranging from 20 to 200 uh, nanomolar. These two uh, molecules are uh, both uh, symmetric di divalent molecules, um, uh, the suramine is already a drug used in the treatment of uh, sleeping sickness uh, caused by the protozoan tripodonosoma, and NF23 is uh, uh, instead competitive and uh, reversible P2X1 receptor antagonist. Um, surprisingly, suramine was already shown to be a, a polymerase inhibition inhibitor. Um, what we try to understand is uh, the mechanism of action of these two inhibitors. So we performed kinetic polymerase assay also in this case, using both the inhibitors. And we saw in this case that the mechanism of action is a mixed mechanism for both the sub substrate, so the RNA and the GTP. Uh, this means that uh, the molecules uh, could bind the polymerase 
in the absence or in presence of the two substrates. We solved in this case the structure of murine norovirus uh, in presence of the two uh, inhibitors, uh, NF23 and suramine, that uh, bind uh, um, close to the um, uh, active site, uh, and, and the structure obtained are very similar. Here is the model obtained of our structure in complex with the RNA and the nucleotide. As you can see from this model, it's possible to say that uh, NF23 and suramine are able to interfere with different uh, ways. So the uh, nucleotide assays uh, in the protein active site, they block this uh, access. They also um, interfere with uh, the uh, correct position of the nucleotide that is already in the active site. They also interfere with the exit route of the new synthesized RNA. So this, this seems to be important uh, inhibitors. Uh, we uh, wanted to understand if uh, uh, this kind of, of um, binding was the same in uh, human norovirus because we obtained the structure only on uh, murine norovirus. So we analyzed the structure and we saw that uh, the tryptophan 42 was important for this pi, 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 pi uh, interaction. So uh, we selected this amino acid that is a tyrosine in human norovirus. We mutated this amino acid and we uh, observed that the IC50 value of the human norovirus mutated was uh, four, six times higher than that one obtained for the um, apoprotein. So it seems that uh, also in the human norovirus we have the same inhibition, so the same interactions. The problem of these two molecules is that they do not, don't enter into the cells. So what we can do now? We can start the optimization of the molecules and the crystal structure analysis could help us in doing this. First of all, we uh, selected the fragments of uh, the molecules that could be important, necessary to the interaction with uh, the protein. We uh, performed uh, a fragment screening with these uh, uh, fragments selected and we obtained the crystal structure of a, a, a fragment bound to two different sites, what we call the high affinity site because we found the molecule in this part um, also if we use uh, a low concentration of the inhibitor or um, at the low affinity site uh, because uh, we found this molecule in this position that is very close to that one observed for suramine and F23 um, only when uh, we use a higher concentration of uh, inhibitors in our crystallization trials. This is important because uh, we see another uh, interaction uh, of inhibitors in this part of the molecule that could, in this case, uh, inhibit the entrance of the RNA in the act active site. We are also thinking to uh, um, design new inhibitors starting from this data, for example, linking these two uh, fragments with a linker that could uh, uh, give to the inhibitor higher uh, pharmaceutical properties and uh, um, could increase the permeability of these compounds. We are also trying to understand which part of uh, the molecule are important for the binding so that we could use some this part as a linker between these uh, uh, two fragments. Uh, so we are uh, collaborated with the um, uh, University of Taiwan that is uh, um, doing several compounds. And we are also trying to insert these uh, molecules inside the liposomes. Uh, in order to see if they penetrate the cell membrane and they inhibit the virus. Of course, this um, work is still ongoing. The work has been done mainly in uh, Milano by our group, uh, by Margherita Pezzullo, that um, uh, worked a lot on uh, 
LKs essays, Delia and Romina, that are helping for crystallization trials, Martino Bolognesi, that is the head of the group, and Mario Milani, that is responsible for all the part of in silico docking and simulations. This work has been done in collaboration with Jacques Roheim in Dresden for the human norovirus, and in Leuven with Johan Knights for the cell-based assays, and in Marseille by Xavier de Lamballerie, also for cell-based assays. And thank you for your attention.